But the main objectives of this session is really to um, very briefly an overview of the guidelines themselves, which are now five years old. Uh, and then, as I was saying, we have to try and improve how to assess structure, function, and rhythm with additional things that we're going to take you through. But when I prepare, it was meant to be in 15 minutes, so now I think we're having 10 minutes uh, to take you through all of these. So firstly, if we, if we look through those um, five planes, you're very familiar with that diagram, which is um, being presented initially by Sintra Yagel, and we modified that for the ESOR guidelines in 2013, and is really looking at the five planes from situs to the three vessel to a view. So this is a sweep. We're starting from the situs. We go through the four chamber view, the left ventricle outflow tract, and the, that, and the three vessel to a view. It's not playing in a loop, which is a pity. <coughs> so that is an overview, and that was a very brief overview indeed, because it's not playing back. But are you familiar with those five planes? You, because that's quite basic. If you're not, you need to go back and you need to learn that, because without that, you're not going to do a good screening. So that was very brief, as I said, and we leave that behind. And we're going to move to how can we try and improve the structures and the, the function of the heart, because I'm going to leave the M mode uh, and, and the rhythm out of this. So it's a little out of order. I wanted to do a structure, function, and rhythm. Because the time is very short, rhythm really is quite a, le a lesson in itself. So I'm going to not speak about reason, I'll just talk about structure and function. So if we concentrate on that, we can, we can add to those guidelines, making basic measurements, adding color, which I hope a lot of you are using, but perhaps not everyone, and using post wave Doppler to make some assessment of function. And M mode, again, M mode is very useful, but I think the time constraints of today, I'm going to skip the M mode, and we're going to just basically go through those three uh, very briefly and then follow that with the presentation. So basic measurements, if you don't measure anything, I suggest that you measure at <coughs> least two things on your scan, the aortic valve and the pulmonary valve, because one, it makes you look at the image. There is our aortic valve, I think you're very familiar with that. So when you're doing the scan, I would say stop the image and see the valve opening and closing, which is only going to do here in one loop and it's gone to the pulmonary valve, but it's the same principle. The pulmonary valve there should be seen, and if you see it opening and closing, and that's a sweep from the aorta to the pulmonary valve. And those are the measurements. I measured here in, in diastole when the valve is closed. The aortic valve measuring 3.4 millimeter, and the pulmonary valve 3.9 millimeters at more or less 20 weeks gestation, since this was a 21 week fetus. Now you say, well, how do I know the measurements? If you use uh, something called viewpoint, which is quite widespread, normally there's a centile chart in that, and those values are measured in diastole. But you're also familiar with Z-scores. Now there's a large number of Z-scores in the literature. This is the first paper to look at the fetus. It's a work we've done together with uh, people from Canada, and it's the first Z-score for fetal measurements. It is now under that uh, website, and I would uh, advise you to look that because there are lots of easy ways of calculating Z-score, the fetal parameter Z. And if we go into that, these graphs are generated from that website based on the, uh, the work I said from Schneider. And you can see you get the graph here, and you can see where those measurements um, plot within the Z-score centiles. Um, so all within the normal range, Z-score or 0.24 for the aortic valve and 0.54 for the pulmonary valve. So we're going to leave the basic measurements, because if you're doing screening, you can't really measure everything. If you have an abnormality, and then you start measuring the mitral valve, the tricuspid valve, you measure the, the arterial duct, you measure the right pulmonary artery. But on a screening point of view, if you don't add anything at the moment, just use aortic and pulmonary valve. Then we move on to color. And color really is fundamental if you're doing a fetal echo, because you give a lot of information. You improve visualization of the structures, because you can see color. It contrasts with the myocardium, so it's easier, particularly if the patient is difficult to scan. You see here a nice shade of blue and red, and if you're not used to color, red means towards the transducer going up here on the screen, or towards where your hand is, and blue going away from the transducer. And if you also note the scale here, 
The velocity is about 64 centimeters per second, which is a cardiac velocity, different from the obstetric velocity. And we can do a whole sweep through the, the fetal heart. Let's do it once again. Display it again. So coming through the left ventricular outflow tract, the smooth color, and then the pulmonary outflow tract in blue because the different direction your three vessel trachea view. And you note here, as I said, the velocity should be set at about 60 centimeters per second for the uh, intracardiac flows and the great arteries uh, color flow mapping. On the other hand, if you're looking at pulmonary veins, as you see here in a dual display, you have left atrium and you have pulmonary veins coming from the left and from the right lungs here in different colors. The velocity is much lower at about 20 centimeters per second in mid gestation. And if we play that, you can see here that the intracardiac velocity is a lot of aliasing because it's too low for the aortic velocity, but there's a nice display of the pulmonary veins both from the left lung coming in red and the right lung coming in blue. And then there is another plane which a lot of you would use because you look in subclavian arteries. And I said it's a little bit higher than the three vessel and trachea view. So you have your standard five plane, but if you move a probe just a little bit more, so this is on the uh, three vessel trachea view. You hear, here you have the superior vena cava, and we're really looking to see the nominate vein which comes above this plane and the subclavian arteries coming through here because the clips, the loops are not playing back. I'm going to try and demonstrate that on the live session. So smaller vessels up in the high mediastine, beginning of the, the neck, velocities are 20, 15, 20 <coughs> centimeters per second. And you can see here the Asgus vein, the subclavian arteries. Unfortunately, I can't stop the clip and play it slowly. Uh, as I said, I'll try and do that on the live session to compensate for this technical problem here. And if you look uh, closely from the subclavian arteries, you choose one coming here, one coming over there, there will be the internal memory arteries, which are uh, uh, branches of the subclavian arteries. You just see one here, and that will delineate the thymus until to the mediastinum. And we have here, very nicely, the, subclavian, the right subclavian going anteriorly <coughs> towards the right arm. And that's uh, what's been described as a thigh box which are the branches from the subclavian arteries, which are the internal mammaries, which delineate the position of the thymus. Very useful if you have uh, a patient with uh, an aberrant right subclavian artery or right aortic artery to see the thymus. So moving to post-wave Doppler. Again, velocities, intracardiac velocities are higher. That's why our color flow map is in a different setting. So the post-wave also is going to be around that kind of velocity, 60 or 70 centimeter. Traditionally said to be that velocity across the pulmonary aortic valve should not be more than 100 centimeters per second or one meters per, sec per second in mid gestation. But now you see as well that there are Z score variables, which makes it very easy to check, particularly when you go through towards 28 weeks, 30 weeks, to check if your velocities are within the normal range. So this is a, a still image here of an aortic velocity, and you should try as much as possible to align the sample um, the sample volume, there's a delay on the arrow, but you can see on the image on the top where the sample volume is more or less aligned with the flow through the aortic valve. And in here, velocity of 60 centimeters per second. And you have here a graph, and this graph comes from a, a recent, relatively recent publication. Again, this is all presented in the same website I referred to earlier on, and it's very easy to go there and calculate the Z-score for a number of Doppler and then mode measurements. So roughly speaking, aortic velocity goes from around 0.8 meters per second at around 20 weeks of gestation to 1.4 towards the end of gestation. So if you have those numbers in mind, it's a very good guidance as to where the aortic velocity should lie. But you can plot that in a centile chart, or you can go into the website, and the, the Z-score can be very easily calculated. Similarly, for the pulmonary uh, valve, usually, providing you are well aligned with both, the pulmonary velocity is just a little bit less and the aortic velocity, and again, a similar, similar graph, and it goes up to 1.2 rather than 1.4 meters per second towards the end of uh, pregnancy. 
Now, myotrin tracker spit flow, it can be quite uh, variable for physiological reasons, biological reasons, but that's the normal waveform. If you're not used to that, it's a biphasic waveform with the first wave being the uh, early systole and the second wave being uh, atrial systole. And normally, the EA ratio is less than one during pregnancy, which is different from the child in the postnatal life. And again, I'm only going to plot here the graph which shows the, the mitral valve EA ratio, but again, you have the tricuspid valve EA ratio, and you can see here that it goes from around 0.6 in mid to 0.5 very early on to about 0.9. So towards the end of pregnancy, is approximating the values that you would see postnatally. So in 15 minutes, uh, we've done a lot of things, but I think I would like to go back to a, a few other planes which you can see because we're concentrating mainly on transverse views and adding color and adding uh, pulse wave Doppler. But there is a plane that you can see which is between the situs and the four chamber view. So instead of doing your sweep very quickly, do it slowly. So between situs and the four chamber view, you'd see this structure here, um, which is the coronary sinus, is on the back of the left atrium. This is the uh, left ventricle here. You can see here simulates an atrial ventricular septal defect, and as you move anteriorly, then you come to the four chamber view. It's very useful to identify that as a normal structure because if you have a left SVC to coronary sinus, that's going to be dilated and it simulates an AVST. And also sometimes it's dilated because you have anomalous pulmonary venous return. So just get used to those uh, additional structures of the normal heart which are not included in the basic uh, ESOC screening guidelines. And the other one is doing a sweep from a transverse view. You see here the three vessel view with the pulmonary aorta, the superior vena cava, and you're seeing here already a relatively prominent azgus vein coming to this SVC. And we see here actually we're seeing the two bronchi before they join up into the trachea. And this here, with the help of the baby, you see that we're going to move from a transverse view to a sagittal view. Uh, and it's very using, useful in practice to do that. And you can see the baby moves, not as quickly as that one. And then from transverse view, it can go into a sagittal view, where we have here the SVC coming into the right atrium and the inferior vena cava coming into the right atrium as well. And the next sweep is actually doing a sweep uh, sagittally, because we're used to doing a transverse sweep. So you can do as well from right to left or left to right, which is this clip here. So we're starting from the right side with the right atrium, IVC, SVC, so superior inferior vena cava, and then you get your aorta and you get your pulmonary artery. So you're basically getting your three vessel views in a sagittal sweep rather than a transverse sweep. So these are additional images, so not, not to be stuck only to those planes, not just one plane at a time, but a continuous sweep as you would do on a stick. So a continuous sweep and then moving around as if you had a three-dimensional view of the heart. So I apologize because the, 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 the clips are not playing as a loop and, and that made it more difficult to point the structures I wanted to show to you, particularly with the vessels around the subclavian arteries, but hopefully the baby is still in a good position and we can try and uh, demonstrate that in the live session. Thank you for your attention and for your patience as well for this program. So this lady is 22 weeks and 6 days, and we are here, we're starting in a, see how it projects there? We're starting with an obstetric preset. You can see here right at the top is an obstetric preset, which is quite nice and wide, but it's quite soft for the heart, and it's very wide, which means your, your frame rate may not be as high as you'd like to have. It's 25 frames per second here. So we're going to change to the fetal heart preset. You can see immediately the frame rate has changed to around the 50. So here, frame rate has doubled. Um, I'm going to make it a bit smaller, baby's moving. Uh, I tend to, although it's the cardiac one, I tend to widen the sector so I can see how the baby is and do a, an internal or an external examination. Head up, you see my hand in there, head up, and I can move down in the midline of the mother, so I can see the babies a bit more to the left side. And at the same time, I can explore the maternal abdomen to see where we have a best window 
to look at this baby. So here seems like a, a good place. So then once we have good view of the heart and this baby is going to move, you can see that. We narrow the sector. We're going to make that image bigger. So I'm going to turn the gain down a little bit. So quick sweep as we did before, normal situs. You have here your aorta, your aorta, your inferior vena cava, your stomach. The head is up, so this is the left side of the baby. <coughs> Sweeping upwards, can you see here the coronary sinus? So if you do that very quickly, you miss it. So you need to do it slowly, and the baby's cooperating. You see the coronary sinus here, double line, and then you see it opening into the right atrium. You don't see the mitral valve so well in that view, just turning the gain down. And as you move more anterior, you get your mitral valve, your left ventricle, you have the offset, you have the moderator band, the left ventricle, baby's kicking. Left ventricle outflow tract here, aortic valve, opening, closing. So what I'm gonna do is to narrow that even more, to show, obviously, baby cooperating. So your frame rate now is about 100 frames per second, and it's much easier to see the valve. So it's a good idea to stop and freeze. You see the valve closed, and you see it very well because we are perpendicular to the valve. You can see open and closing. So if you're going to measure, ideally you measure more in a, a different plane, but roughly here. That is obviously incorrect. You have to question that 2.6, a little bit small for 22 weeks gestation, because I'm not in the best plane. So it's no good doing it when you don't have a good view. Baby's cooperating now, getting the left ventricular outflow tract. Much better here. So stop, freeze, and move the transducer, and then go back slowly, frame by frame. Nice continuity here between the left ventricle and the anterior wall of the aorta until the aortic valve appearing there and then it's going to open and then it's going to close and moving back you can see the mitral valve open and closing as well and you see the hinge points of the aortic valve not quite as clear as I'd like to see it so I'm going to put a bit more pressure here turn the gain down a bit that is better so it's much more clear, it's, it's much better place to, to measure the aortic valve because you're measuring it perpendicular to the wall, so from around there to around here, so that 3.7 is more in keeping with the gestational age. And then you do the same with the, the pulmonary valve, so tilting upwards, that's the pulmonary valve. Always know, I'm not even looking at the, at the console here, I'm just, I know where the freeze button is, I'm just looking at the screen until I find the valve and it's closed and it's open and if I go back it's closed again it's not quite the best plane to measure that but we'll give an idea of the pulmonary valve which should be a bit bigger than the aortic valve so this is 3.8 against the 3.7 in the pulmonary in the aortic valve <coughs> so from measurements there so let's put some color you see how I work with my uh, sector very, very narrow, and the velocity is around 68 centimeters per second, which is appropriate for her gestational age of nearly 23 weeks. And you can see it moves fast. It's different from the obstetric color. You see, you can see the pericardial fluid very easily. That does not mean there is an effusion. Normal, normally there is fluid in the pericardium. You should see it in diastole. Uh, so in systole, when the heart contracts, in diastole squishes it out of the way. So mitral inflow, tricuspid inflow, coming into the left ventricle, coming out the left ventricle, very gently here, very, very gently, I'm moving towards the left ventricle outflow tract, and then the pulmonary outflow tract. So colors are all within a nice shade of blue, which means the velocities are within this range. So even without doing the uh, pulse wave Doppler, I know that the velocities are all normal. So if you're not used to doing that, you can do a sweep, and then, stop and then go back on your loop. There's your three vessel trachea view. I'm not 
quite seen the trachea there yet. Let's have a look again. Maybe it's a bit too big. Baby moves, so we're constantly moving to try and improve the resolution of the image and a better ultrasound window. So we can use uh, a different color as well, which is very sensitive to lower velocity, called ADF in this system. And it's always a good idea to split the image. So this is very good for doing a sweep between the very back of the heart. You see there, our familiar coronary sinus here, opening into the right atrium. This is bringing the coronary veins from the heart. We know about coronary arteries because we get to worry to it, about it when we get older. But there are also coronary veins and they are draining here back into the right atrium. And you see at that stage you don't really see the mitral valve. Then as you move anterior there's the mitral valve, no more offset. And it's very nice for doing sweep between the posterior part of the septum, so no ventricular septal defect at the back of the heart. Anteriorly, very slowly, very slowly, we're looking here for the perimeminous area, so that brief sweep here, but slow, between four chamber view and the left ventricular outflow tract. You know there is no ventricular septal defect. You can see that I'm rotating my probe slightly to just to be more perpendicular to the septum. And remember that the pulmonary artery is gonna come here. So this is the aorta, pulmonary artery coming here. It's, it's nicely the trachea now. See, in here we're starting to see the subclavian artery. So the aorta is here. So if I drop that velocity a bit more. You can see here the vessel that was going to come from the aorta into the right side which is the first branch of the aorta, which is the brachiocephalic artery, and that's the trachea, so it's in front of the trachea. So this here, if we follow the box, it will go into the right arm, which is the uh, right subclavian artery, and then if you follow through the neck, you'll see the carotid artery. So if I put my box a bit more this way, you see that that, and we're seeing the internal memory as well. Can you see that flashing here? Yeah, that's the thymus. You see the <coughs> stopping here? That's one internal memory. That's the thymus area. That's the other one. And you can see here it's going to come from the subclavian artery. Uh, quite nice there. So that's compensating for some of the shortcomings with the, with the uh, slide. Yeah, so very nicely there. You see, you see the the normal subclavian artery. So the velocity here, it's not really velocity on the ADF, but it's kind of equivalent, because you're decreasing the, your equivalent to a PRF here. But it's, it's less angle dependent, and it's quite nice for small vessels, so that's coming from the aorta, so we are above the level of the three vessel trachea view, and very nicely there, the, your thigh box as well. So uh, let's make it a bit wide now, just to try and demonstrate what I said. This baby is perfect, isn't it, for a demonstration? But if you start with the perfect and then, you know, you get the difficult patient, the baby is just going to move. <laughs> so within, then a sweep transversely, that's the baby's head. So I'm not moving, the baby starts to move. But I can rotate my hand. Can you see that I'm making, I'm keeping it wide so you can see how you can go in the same spot. Can you see my hand there? Yeah. So same spot, this kind of movement. I'm exaggerating it now. I'm on a transverse sweep. I rotate a little bit, and I turn up and down, up towards the baby's head, down towards the baby's feet. Rotate more and do this, and then until you get your sagittal view, and your aortic arch, your ductal arch. So I kept it wide just so you can see the movements, a nice profile as well, so cardiologists know how to do a profile. <laughs> so let's get it a bit more. Make it a bit bigger. So rotating, and as you rotate, you see better the left ventricular outflow track, and I'm rotating more 
you can see how the ribs are becoming all kind of oblique. Rotating and twisting, you get then your superior vena cava coming here into the right atrium, your ductus venosus, and a bit more we should see the inferior vena cava here. That's the inferior vena cava. That's the right atrium. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. So the right atrial appendage, the right atrium, the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava, the diaphragm looks good, the foramen ovale, the right pulmonary artery. So I'm doing a sweep now, a three vessel view, SVC, aorta, aortic arch, and pulmonary, almost like this line that I was having. So very nice to put color on that, because if you're not used, see how much information you get there. Also, you see here the normal azigus vein coming into the superior vena cava, yeah, which is going into the right atrium. So, so by splitting the image, you can see here the superior vena cava, the right atrium, the azigus. So don't get confused thinking this is the aortic artery, because it's not. The aortic artery is coming there now. And then the pulmonary. Now I'm going to increase the velocity a bit because I'm into the artery. So pulmonary artery, aorta, superior vena cava. So if I want to see more the veins in the veins, the, ve the flow in the veins, I'm decreasing the velocity. If I move to the arteries, that's too much, and then I'm increasing the velocity, so equivalent to velocity. So it's very easy to do here in this machine. So if we keep the velocity too low in the arteries, it's a bit more difficult to see the structures. So increasing the velocity again, it cleans the image. And if we want to see the veins, I decrease the velocity. Okay, let's try a bit of pulse wave. So it's always good to put a bit of color to direct you as to where you're going to put your sample volume. The sample volume roughly is usually around two millimeters. Most machines come set up with two millimeters. Baby is moving. So Doppler measurements, ideally, you'd have the baby quiet, uh, but it should still give an idea. So. You're probably used to doing tricuspid valve regurgitation, particularly in the first trimester. Um, but if we're looking at, this is a bit of a challenge now with this movie. If you're looking at the flow velocity, we, we have to put the sample volume not here, but past the valve. So let's do that one there. So go live again, nitro valve. It's a question of adjusting the hand a little bit. The sound, I'm not sure if you can hear the sound, but it's a good idea because the sound does direct you as to um, whether you get the best flow. So that's the E wave, early diastole, and the A wave, so you can measure the velocities there. And the second velocity, so 36 and 50, so EA ratio is roughly about 0.6, which is the normal for this gestation. Can you hear? Can you hear the sound from there? You see, I'm just moving my hand. I'm not even looking at the patient or the screen. It's just from the sound, sometimes you can direct the information, the sample volume to the right place. So that's still the mitral valve. So now I can move to the tricuspid valve. Velocities are usually a little bit higher in the tricuspid valve. And not infrequently, you get a summation of the two waveforms in the tricuspid valve. And if you're going to make measurements, you really need to try and get at least three cycles that look more or less the same. You can see they are almost adding up here, but it's the E wave, the A wave, and it's quite stable. So this is, represents something, because it's very unstable. It's difficult to, to make any uh, judgment about the velocities. So always parallel to the flow. So if I'm here, it's not a good one for the aortic valve because we're 90 degrees to the aortic flow, so you have to move your hand. It doesn't matter if the image is not clear enough. What matters is the position of the sample volume. It looks a little bit big. I'm going to make it a bit smaller here. Yeah, so sometimes when you check on your machine, you can do this afterwards on all the digital system. So you don't miss the opportunity to get the signal. So here we get about 62 centimeters per second, which is normal. Back into a live, so already here in the pulmonary artery. So come out of that so you can see the image. 
So again, I'm going to adjust my hand a little bit more just to be parallel to the pulmonary artery. Slightly less uh, lower velocity in the pulmonary artery. So it's around 60. But if you look at the image, So just look at the image, how in the pulmonary artery, uh, I'm going to lower the velocity a little bit to exaggerate there. You get a little bit of gray, that's green size, you get a bit of green around here because I lowered the velocity, yeah? From 60 to 70, I put it to 55. So we know that velocity around 60, but here you're getting much more aliasing because we are in the duct. In the duct, is the velocity is much higher than the, across the pulmonary valve. It's the highest velocity in the system. You see that? Again, baby's not quiet enough now. If we measure the velocity in the duct, it's going to be... You can see here that it has picked up two velocities, yeah? That's around the 90 centimeters per second. That's in the duct, and that's because the baby moved. We're picking up the pulmonary artery now. I think this baby has been very, very um, good. Hopefully that has uh, compensated for uh, some of the issues we had. Uh, and as I said, I promise I will put the PDF with animated um, slides onto um, the website so you can download it from there. Thank you very much for this baby. And uh, if you have any questions.